Good morning, friends from the media. Welcome to the 11 a.m. press briefing. Uh, present today, we have the chief executive as well as the Secretary for Food and Health and Controller of the Center for Health Protection. Uh, the chief executive and the controller uh, will uh, have some opening addresses before we open the floor to questions. Because of the pandemic, please uh, uh, put your mask on and uh, observe social distancing measures. The chief executive, good morning, everyone. This morning, together with the Secretary for Food and Health and the controller from uh, for the uh, Center for Health Protection here yeah, to give an account of our latest measure on containing epidemic and also our support for uh, elderly confirmed patients. Now, you have been asking for this figure. So, uh, this is about the application of RAT in Hong Kong and also uh, the number of confirmed cases through RAT. In the past two years, we have always stressed the PCR test is the uh, golden standard for its high accuracy and sensitivity. But uh, the downside is uh, it takes um, dedicated person now to take samples and to be uh, sent to laboratories for analysis. So we have to wait a while before the results are available. So when uh, we had, uh, when we have a lot of cases uh, to be tested, then uh, there was a bad luck. Members of the public had to wait for a few days before they could know whether they test a positive or negative, but with technological advancement and uh, the approving authorities have also approved RAT kits. So we have started to use RAT rapid antigen test and PCR is the test for nucleic exit because I will uh, be mentioning the terms time and again. So. Uh, just want to uh, make it more friendly. Now, RAT is rapid. All of you have uh, self-administered RAT for yourselves, and it can be used as a supplementary tool. It cannot replace PCR, uh, which is of a very high sensitivity. PCR is still being used today, but because of uh, the reality, we have to find out as early as possible, the uh, state of the epidemic in Hong Kong. So um, uh, we have revised our view on the use of RAT, hoping that we can enhance our capacity to detect cases earlier. The advantage is uh, when a person knows that he is positive, then he can uh, isolate himself and take measures to protect his family members and uh, to protect the community. And the health authorities can intervene earlier to provide early isolation and treatment. We have an abundant supply of our rate tickets in Hong Kong, and prices have dropped substantially. Last year, when we purchased RAT ourselves, it cost more than $100 for a package. For a, But now you can get a pack at just over $10. And with uh, the full support of the central authorities, the Hong Kong South government has procured a large amount of RAT kits being distributed to the people of Hong Kong through various channels. RAT kits distributed through our infantry uh, directly or indirectly distributed to the community now number over 8 million packs or kits. Now, HAD is now uh, distributing RAT kits to um, cleansing workers, security guards, and uh, to buildings with high viral load in under our sewage surveillance program. Now, the Department of Health has undertaken the following measures. On the 25th of February, it was announced that the SL government will directly accept RAT positive result as a confirmed case. There is no need to take another sample for PCR 
verification. And then the second measure was also announced on the same day. The CHP will set up and launch an online system. As a uh, and a uh, notification system, a uh, declaration system for individuals tested positive for COVID-19 using RAT uh, for people to report directly. It was launched formally on the 7th of March. Of course, on the day of its launch, people just tested positive could report their results. So uh, the 6th and the 7th, they could report immediately. It also offered an opportunity for cases tested positive through RAT before the launch of the scheme. That covered the period uh, between the 26th of February and uh, the 3rd of March, because as I said, we announced on the 25th of February that we accept an RAT positive result as a confirmed case. So for members of the public who tested positive during the 26th of February to the uh, 5th of uh, March, they could declare through the system the um, deadline for uh, for retrospective reporting was the 14th of March to allow the health authorities to have a better grasp of the epidemic. And then uh, those infected during the period might have already recovered. They might uh, had no symptoms or very mild symptoms or with mild discomfort. After the period, they uh, would uh, be no longer um, sick. And if uh, the symptoms were serious, it would have um, been hospitalized, but we would like to confirm the status of a confirmed case. Uh, that is uh, to uh, confirm that a person uh, was infected with COVID-19. We have not announced cases reported during this period since um, it would not be uh, meaningful to um, issue an update every day. As of Monday, um, we have compiled the um, number of Report so far, and those who made reports um, would indicate um, when they tested positive, and as such, we could um, compile the uh, overall figures between February the twenty sixth to March the fifth. For those who um, declared um, positive RT results, um, the number was. 184,390, and this is the distribution of the dates of declaration. The green bars denote um, those who tested positive through PCR tests, and the orange bars denote those who tested positive through RAT. You can um, see that the overall trend for COVID-19 in Hong Kong um, remained largely unchanged. From the chart, we saw that um, the pandemic um, peaked on March the 3rd. So that was the case, um, whether or not we include the RIT positive cases. And um, we have seen a downward trend in the number of cases. In the last few days, um, starting March the 11th, um, we saw a plateau in the number of cases and we did not see a declining trend. That is why um, now is a critical juncture. Our work is based on science. From the number of positive cases, um, we can identify the current situation, but we want to be forward looking as well. And that is why we engage in, in different areas of work in the meantime. And one example is switch testing. Switch testing started in October 2020, and since then, um, 
we have constantly carried out sewage testing um, and our work never stopped um, even when we saw no um, new local cases. The work is conducted jointly between the EPD Drainage Services Department and a cross-disciplinary team at the University of Hong Kong. I visited the HKU laboratories twice to find out about their work. Since the fifth wave of the pandemic started, sewage testing has been reinforced. We introduced um, many extra um, fixed sewage testing spots and that is why um, that means we would um, take samples at these spots on a regular basis. And we also introduce new ad hoc testing sites. If we um, saw um, high viral levels at fixed testing points, we would try to identify um, the buildings um, that give rise to these high um, viral levels. And if we look at the average figures, we saw a declining trend. The trend um, peaked earlier on February the 28th. Um, there is a four day um, difference um, between the um, trends of switch testing and the number of positive cases that um, that means um, we can identify the um, trend a few days earlier. In the last few days, um, we have experienced a plateau um, denoted by the red circle. That is why um, we must not let our guts down during this time. This chart um, denotes the um, number of cases detected through restriction testing declarations under CAP 599J. The Secretary for Food and Health would um, issue RTDs at um, restricted areas and all individuals within the restricted areas are subject to mandatory PCR tests. We have carried out many such operations since the fifth wave started. Since January, 226 RTD operations were completed and 154 were completed after February the 1st. And the number of preliminary positive cases detected through each um, operation was substantial. And um, in recent operations, we have managed to identify um, eight to 900 or more than a thousand cases after each operation. So the numbers have remained high in recent days. The orange line denote the um, ratio of preliminary positive cases compared with the population being tested. For residents that are in breach of the RTD orders, they would be subject to a fine of $10,000. But so far, um, most residents subject to RTDs um, were cooperative and they supported our testing work. And I have um, visited a number of sites and I saw that our staff were working very hard and our testing contractors have worked very hard as well. And um, that way the residents would know whether they have tested positive or negative. And at the end of the operation, those who tested negative can leave upon um, producing an SMS. Those who tested positive would be sent to community quarantine centers. For 
residents who tested positive after December the 31st, um, they would no longer have to be tested. Since they had tested positive earlier, um, there was no need to test them again. And even if they tested positive again, um, they would be considered repulsive cases and there's no need to isolate or treat them. Every day we conduct a large number of PCR tests of mandatory or voluntary basis. Um, they are being conducted at community testing centers and mobile specimen stations. Given the prevalent use of PCR tests, well, the um, number of tests conducted in the last two weeks have been in decline, but in the last one or two weeks, um, the daily number of tests remain at some um, 150 to 200,000. So the number of positive cases um, went down and um, it peaked in early March. And we are um, entering a plateau and that means we are not going to see an obvious decline. It shows there are still a lot of silent carriers in the community. The following two charts are more academic in nature from the uh, Hong Kong U team released to the public on a regular basis. Now, um, uh, people like to ask the um, immediate uh, effective reproduction rate and that is uh, how many uh, persons can one confirmed a case uh, pass on the virus, but then uh, that hinges upon a lot of factors, whether there are social distancing measures, travel uh, restriction, and whether uh, masks are being worn. Now, according to the latest figure, uh, it is now below one, but still we have to remain vigilant. And the last is uh, from the Hong Kong U again. They, on a regular basis, monitor the um, commuting or journeys are made by members of the public. The more uh, journeys made uh, by members of the public at a higher risk. And therefore, that's why we have so many social distancing measures, including uh, class suspension and work from home. Well, um, uh, the figure dropped recently because of class suspension. And in uh, this week, there is um, slight uh, sign of uh, increase. I think the media have captured a lot of uh, photos showing that people are now moving around in the community again. So we must not lower our guards. If um, people flow in the community increases again, then um, that may affect our uh, state uh, given that the, we are in a stable but uh, not on a declining trend yet. Now I'd like to uh, talk about how we are going to strengthen support for el for the elderly. Last week, we said that one of uh, our uh, focuses so should be uh, to reduce our death toll, reduce infections, and reduce uh, serious uh, cases. Now, we've got major progress. The first is the availability of drugs. Well, at the uh, suggestion of the Hong Kong U team, uh, medication is the most effective way. So on Monday, the second batch of effective oral um, agent, uh, that is uh, Pfizer's Paslovid arrived and uh, is being used widely in Hong Kong. And um, Manuva Parava, manufactured by MSD, has already been used before Monday. And I've made it very clear to the hospital authority that is um, most important to save lives. And therefore, we um, we, we don't um, have uh, to uh, be frugal in the use of the drugs. And we have um, contacted the uh, most senior level of the two drug manufacturers. And so uh, we can administer the drugs to lower the need for hospitalization. And I said yesterday, uh, the HA has already um, um, prescribed the drugs to over 34,000. 
at uh, elderly care homes, uh, outpatient clinics, and uh, inpatient, and also uh, A&E department, and also uh, people who sought help at uh, designated clinics, especially the elderly. I'm uh, pleased to announce that according to uh, doctors, uh, the drugs are very effective. Sign from today, SIGET, and that is the community geriatric evaluation team will support confirmed cases in elderly care homes. Based on clinical guidelines, doctors will administer such drugs if uh, they consider appropriate. And also uh, the uh, patient support call center of hospital authority will also take the initiative to contact people being isolated at home uh, with risks. If need be, they can be arranged to attend designated clinics to uh, get the drugs. Now we had um, Zoom meeting uh, with uh, the private hospitals last week and they are um, very willing to provide beds and they're willing to um, provide consultation for confirmed COVID cases at their outpatient department. We will uh, provide these two types of drugs to private hospitals because they won't, they're not able to procure them themselves because the drugs are not yet uh, registered. And so uh, the uh, drugs will have to come from HA's infantry. In uh, elderly isolation centers and holding centers run by SWD, the medical staff will also administer the drugs to elderly patients. The fifth enhanced measure is to set up as many uh, holding centers and community isolation facilities for our elderly as soon as possible. We got two CIF and holding centers at two indoor games halls. The third at Harbour Road uh, will be commissioned today. And then by the 21st of March, uh, we will also commission the uh, CIF at Kaita Cruise Terminal, which offers 1,200 places. And uh, six more indoor games halls will gradually be converted to serve as CIF. Another location is at Hong Shui Q. To further support uh, the elderly that require isolation and to uh, focus our treatment facilities, Hong Shui Q is a community installation, I mean, isolation facility built with the support of uh, the central government. Is uh, actually a cabin hospital. We will have a uh, two hundred uh, places CIF come holding center for elderly persons that require isolation and treatment to lessen the burden on hospital authority. These elders are um, milder cases uh, with uh, milder symptoms, and they need isolation and medical support. As I said, when uh, the hardware is available, the greatest uh, bottleneck is personnel. So the government has adopted a multi-pronged approach to hire carers, including those from the mainland and from Hong Kong. 180 carers have arrived from the mainland, and after training, they will start to serve at holding centers for local recruitment. Judging from the number of applicants, we see that the response is very encouraging. But uh, they need to be interviewed by SWD first to see how many will actually join the team. The fourth is to provide more support to RCHGs in terms of provision of uh, supplies and hotel facilities for closed loop management of their staff. We understand that over 100 staff from over 100 Elderly care homes are willing to uh, adopt this closed loop management arrangement. Uh, so, uh, starting from the uh, 9th, uh, they have moved into these hospitals. Another new measure is reverse isolation, and that is if there is an outbreak in a um, care home, the appropriate approach is to move the uh, non affected elderly persons from away. The RCHGs. There are two licensed and newly built RCHGs. 
that can provide 200 places for residents, for healthy residents from LCHs with cases of outbreak. They can then uh, be subject to reverse isolation to protect them from any infection. Of course, the most effective way is vaccination. Among the eligible group, that is those uh, um, over, um, uh, we have already achieved a 90% with the first dose, but those over 70 or 70 to 79, uh, 80% and uh, those over 80, 55%, we have to uh, raise the vaccination rate for these groups to 90% as soon as possible. The expert groups have agreed that uh, the uh, interval for the second and the third uh, phase uh, can be uh, shortened. Apart from the elderly, uh, children as a group, we want to uh, boost the vaccination rate for those between 3 and 11. 55% of them have been vaccinated. And if uh, children want to resume uh, classes after the Easter holidays, they must be vaccinated. For secondary students who have achieved uh, to uh, a, a 90 or over 90% vaccination rate, and if primary students cannot catch up, then uh, that may affect the chance of a resumption of face-to-face -face classes. I uh, took a little bit longer time in my report, so I can reserve more time for questions. But I'll first give the floor to Dr. Edward Choi, controller of CHP, to uh, report on the RAT declaration work. Um, from one of the slides, um, we um, talked about the cases reported through the RAT um, declaration system since it was launched for cases um, from February the 26th to March the 5th, um, those did not, uh, those would be reported between the 7th to 14th of March. By March the 10th, we saw that um, people who tested positive would um, declare their cases almost immediately and they would receive an SMS message and then they would be able to up, they would be able to upload their Hong Kong identity card copy and a photo of the RAT results. And we since March the tenth, um, the figures we compiled could um, accurately um, reflect the daily figures. Like the C said, we received some one hundred eighty four thousand reported cases with the distribution as shown on the chart. These figures were very um, useful to us because we were able to see the number of cases reported every day. We have two main systems, the RAT system and PCR system. We saw a rising trend in the pandemic from the 21st to 22nd of February, and we saw a peak um, on around 2nd to 3rd of March. And um, we saw 76 to 77,000 cases. And after March the 4th, we saw a declining trend. In the past seven days, the number of reported RIT and PCL cases um, was at around 30,000 per day. We saw some fluctuations. Sometimes we had less, sometimes we had more than 30,000. Even though we have passed the peak of 70,000 cases per day, um, the virus remains active in the community since we still have almost 30,000 cases per day. After um, receiving the um, reports, we would um, carry out um, random investigation for those who declared positive RET results, we would um, deploy contractors to um, visit their homes. And um, the 
they would be requested to provide um, nasal samples. And we saw that in about 30 um, cases, the results were negative, and we would further investigate these cases to see why, um, despite the positive RAT results, um, the, the random samples came back negative. Some um, people um, misread the RAT results. Um, they thought the indeterminate or um, pending um, results were positive. We now proceed to questions. Please raise your hand and identify your organization before you speak. As usual, since we have a large number of media outlets, please restrict yourself to no more than two questions, and you will not be able to ask follow-up questions. The gentleman at the back, please. I'm from RTHK. Mrs. Lam, two days ago, you said you had no plans to tighten the social distancing measures, but there were news today um, that um, the dining in um, service will be restricted to one patron per table. For those who are unvaccinated, they could not secure proof um, for vaccine pass. So how are you going to deal with them? As um, you said, um, more than 180,000 people tested positive through the RET system. Some people were concerned that if they declared their positive results, they would be sent to the makeshift hospitals. That's why they did not declare their cases. So would 180,000 be an underestimation? Some people indicated that they um, received the test kits um, after they recovered. And when they were sick, they asked, they had to ask their family members to um, purchase supplies and food for them. Since many people have been infected and recovered, do we still need so many isolation facilities at Kai Tech? Um, could they be converted into treatment facilities for those in serious conditions? Chief Executive. In this wave of the epidemic, we have installed the most stringent social distancing measures and we have no current plans to further tighten these measures. We saw that um, the public might have let their guards down. Um, I just showed you the commuting um, figures based on Octopus um, records. We saw a slight rise in the number of commuters. We call for the public to refrain from going out unless necessary, and employers should allow their employees to work from home. As for what happens um, in beaches, um, the, the measure is nothing new. So that um, the management of beaches um, falls under the LCSD. Um, the surface at um, swimming beaches have been sustain suspended for a long time. Many people um, nowadays visit the beaches um, since the weather is hot and sometimes they had no masks on. And um, so the LCSD might have to um, reinforce the management of these beaches, for example, by sealing off these beaches. And this is a move we once put in place previously. We do not want to see um, people flock to beaches. And our goal is to safeguard the entire system. We want to reduce the flow of people and minimize gatherings for the benefit of public health. For those who were unvaccinated but have since recovered from COVID, in terms of um, the vaccine pass arrangements, I would defer to um, the secretary or the controller. For the 180,000 odd 
um, cases who were infected after February the 26th, we did not conduct any follow-up actions. You said that um, those who tested positive through RAT were um, wary of being sent to isolation facilities. Um, that was not our objective. In our press release on February the 25th, we explained the objective of the exercise, um, which was to um, give us a better grasp of the pandemic and to allow um, those who were infected um, to prove that um, they had recovered from COVID-19. Um, sometimes um, the proof was useful, for instance, for um, to secure exemptions from, from vaccination, and sometimes proof would be needed by the employers. As to um, whether we still need so many community isolation facilities, um, we are constantly monitoring the situation. Given the enormous number of patients, not all patients who tested positive could be sent to community isolation facilities. And we saw that many people follow the rules by staying at home and self-isolating till they recover. And if necessary, they could call the hotline and seek medical attention at designated clinics. So as to whether there will be adjustments to our community isolation facilities going forward, this is something that will be considered by the SAL government. Thank Some tested positive uh, patient and being isolated at home may not be able uh, to receive the um, anti-epidemic uh, kits and also uh, um, unable, and, uh, who were unable to contact uh, the hotline. We apologize, but we are now catching up. Yesterday, we distributed over 16,000 anti-epidemic kits and through the Department of Health or a sign uh, from the midnight of uh, uh, the night before yesterday, um, they uh, were approached by the Department of Health and they numbered over 60,000 and they were all distributed. They were all provided with anti-epidemic kits. So we will do it more quickly and we will uh, enrich the uh, contents of uh, the anti-epidemic risk. For instance, uh, some people could not buy paracetamol and now it's included in the kit and some uh, elderly persons would like to know their blood oxygen level and now an oximeter is already included in the kit. When it comes to uh, converting uh, CIFs uh, for treating serious cases that is not possible. If you have visited uh, the CIF at Tingyi or Santin, you will see that they are like uh, holiday camps for isolation of uh, mild cases. For instance, uh, there are three in a room. It's impossible to treat serious cases that would affect the provision of uh, medical services. However, in all CIFs, there is a medical post, but then the uh, layout and the construction of uh, these CIF is not like a big medical ward to help serious cases. Now, Apart from CIF, so we have the Asia World Expo, Community Treatment Center run by the Hospital Authority, and uh, also uh, uh, the place run by SWD originally meant for elderly quarantine, but now used for quarantine isolation. Uh, they are more appropriate for um, treating serious cases, but then we didn't have enough personnel and we're grateful to the central authorities for helping out. 76 arrived earlier and this afternoon, a few hundreds would arrive. I'm going to welcome them at our border cross crossing point personally. So with treatment facilities and manpower, I'm sure we can boost our capacity. 
to uh, lower the risk of our elderly patients uh, turning into serious cases. SHF, SFH, please talk about uh, the relationship between the vaccine pass and also those who have recovered. Since the launching of uh, the vaccine pass and uh, also the uh, Joint Scientific Committee have made recommendations on the use of different types of vaccines and also the time intervals between the first and second and second and third doses and also the overall conditions of our recovered patients. The Joint Scientific Committee have uh, got uh, their considerations and also professional recommendations for different scenarios. Of course, if a person hasn't been vaccinated at all but has recovered from COVID, what documentation should he provide? At this stage, we have a computer platform and a staff at a premises covered by vaccine pass will deal with that. We have administrative measures to handle these cases. And uh, the uh, different arrangement for uh, people under different scenarios uh, will are uh, dealt with by the Joint Scientific Committee. Of course, we'll be lenient. And uh, if uh, the computer system is not yet uh, up and running, then paper-based uh, documentation is also acceptable. Uh, this uh, lady in the back. A reporter with Bloomberg News. Um, uh, the first question is about with the HKU uh, estimating more than half of the citizens uh, might soon to be infected. Or in the, uh, uh, Mrs. Lam just said that the daily cases were uh, like plateaued. And are you still trying to get cases back to zero? And if that, if so, uh, whether you will uh, reinstate the measures that like contact tracing or compulsory isolation for all cases, uh, if like the level becomes to down to the manager level, and whether Hong Kong will live it with the virus. And the second question will be on the mainland. Uh, so um, Shenzhen and Shanghai has saw like search from import cases from Hong Kong. And uh, whether Beijing has uh, ever expressed concern or what people from Hong Kong would be seeding outbreaks to the mainland and whether you anticipate that the further restriction for people crossing the border uh, from uh, crossing, uh, go, uh, either going to mainland side or people from mainland coming to Hong Kong. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the two questions. Uh, the first question uh, is, uh, I, I am not in a position to uh, comment on any estimates or modeling uh, done by our uh, academic community. Uh, I think they are all doing it in their respective scientific way based on assumptions and the data that they have collated. Uh, but over the last two years and so, uh, we have been working very closely with um, the various research groups. Uh, some of the graphs that I have shown you just now uh, were also taken from the study by the Hong Kong uh, University Medical uh, Faculty. Uh, but judging from the um, high numbers that we have seen, uh, it will not be a, a surprise that there are still a lot of silent transmissions uh, in society. And if people uh, now become a bit relaxed and they go out more often and they have gatherings and so on, then this transmission will continue because Omicron is a very, very highly transmissible. And that's why I repeatedly uh, try to convey the message this morning that this is not the time for uh, relaxation. This is not the time for being complacent that Hong Kong uh, epidemic situation is going to improve significantly in the, the short term. Now, um, of course, I think in, in every society, we should tr strive to do our best in uh, combating a public health uh, crisis. Uh, Hong Kong has been uh, trying her best uh, since January 2020 
to suppress the spread of the COVID-19 virus in Hong Kong, uh, to prevent um, critical illness and, of course, to, as far as possible, to avoid uh, deaths. Uh, at any point in time, we need to revise, review, and adjust our policy measures. In the current fifth round, yes, we have made far more adjustments to our measures than the previous four rounds because the numbers were simply not manageable if we continue to do what we have been doing in the last two years, like uh, doing contact tracing of every case and trying to identify the close contact and the close contact of the close contact in every case and putting every of such close contact or um, uh, confirmed case in an institution. That is simply unrealistic. So we have to adjust our policies by going for this tiered uh, level of uh, isolation and treatment. And of course, uh, we will uh, critically review uh, our experience in this round and decide on how uh, Hong Kong should tackle a future wave uh, of COVID-19 or any other uh, virus in order to achieve the best results. And let me make it clear that the best results, as I said at the very beginning of fighting the epidemic, are public health results, economic results, because I can't see the economy being uh, torn into pieces uh, by just going for public health measures. And third is the people's acceptance and tolerance. So we will continue to be guided by those um, important uh, principles in devising the best uh, public health strategy uh, for Hong Kong. Now, the second question uh, is about uh, the border. Uh, and I have to say that um, the Central People's Government has been extremely understanding and supportive of Hong Kong. Uh, with the uh, clusters now being seen very close to Hong Kong, that is in our neighboring city of Shenzhen. Uh, one would expect that Shenzhen could easily close the border, that no Hong Kong uh, uh, passengers could cross the border into Shenzhen in order to uh, uh, cut the transmission. Uh, but Shenzhen has not uh, taken this uh, act, and I believe the Central People's Government also uh, does not want to see this happen. Uh, so we still have a certain degree of people flow uh, from Hong Kong into Shenzhen, but where the public health considerations dictate, that is, uh, Shenzhen wants to impose more stringent uh, pre-arrival tests of uh, PCR and uh, 24 hours instead of 48 hours, then, of course, it's a very legitimate response of the uh, city government. And the Hong Kong SL government will uh, fully cooperate and support uh, Shenzhen in uh, taking those uh, legitimate measures. Similarly, for the flow of cargo, the Central People's Government, the Guangdong Government, and the Shenzhen Government officials have all told me and assured me that uh, they would try very hard to ensure the smooth arrival of cargo, especially fresh produce and vegetables uh, that would support uh, the people of Hong Kong. But we need to find alternative measures. So instead of just relying on uh, uh, 8,000 cross-border truck drivers transporting the goods on a daily basis. We now have uh, cargo coming in by sea. Uh, we now have cargo coming in by train. So uh, this is to illustrate to you that uh, this very um, uh, strong support uh, from um, my mainland counterparts, uh, despite the difficulties or the um, emergency situation that they are now facing. Uh, so uh, we will we will continue to uh, cooperate fully uh, with the mainland authorities to take the necessary uh, measures to protect the uh, safety and the health of people on both sides because we belong to one country and uh, we are compatriots and we would love to see uh, both sides of the border coming out of this epidemic as soon as possible. Thank you. Next question, please. Mr. Sam, this is from the Hong Kong Economic Journal. I have two questions. The um, former Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Geoffrey Ma, criticized the government of mishaps in policy. And according to a latest poll, um, your rating has hit the lowest um, in the last two years. So, 
Do you have any plans to reinstate public confidence in the government's anti-epidemic work? You said that the pandemic um, has hit a plateau. Would this be um, a reason to further postpone the chief executive election? The nomination um, period was postponed and um, there are only two weeks left. Um, if the election is to be further postponed, what would be your considerations? And are you going to set a deadline for making a decision? In the fifth wave of the epidemic, we can see how severe um, the pandemic was based on the caseload and deaths. I understand um, criticism some people may have of the SEL government. And as the head of the SEL government, I do accept criticisms. So I will continue to accept criticisms in a humble manner. And I would um, urge my team to do their very best in fighting the pandemic. This is my only priority right now. And like we explained on February the 18th, it was a very difficult decision. I have participated in an election and um, I um, had to form my cabinet in the aftermath of the election. If we further postpone the election, then the um, chief executive elect would have less time to um, complete the work. But um, legally speaking, um, there's, there is scope to further postpone the election by invoking the emergency reg regulations ordinance. Hong Kong has electoral legislation and according to the basic law, the term of the chief executive is, is five years. So any further um, postponement is be beyond the ambit of the SAL government. And any further postponement would be um, decided by the central government. And um, the Hong Kong SAL um, must have um, a head in place so I could only say that further postponing the election um, would be a difficult decision. And um, myself as chief executive would discuss this further with the central government. I submitted a report to the central government and the central government agreed to a postponement. So I believe um, similar considerations will be in play for any further extension. The next question, please. Good morning. Um, I'm from CCCTV. And with the support of the central government, a lot of supplies arrived in Hong Kong, but many people are yet to secure um, sufficient medical supplies and support. Chief executive, how can the SAL government um, tackle this um, issue of the, uh, of providing the last mile. And um, can you give us an update on, on the support offered by the mainland delegation? And um, in recent days, we saw um, large fluctuations in Hong Kong stock market and the Hang Seng index um, uh, fluctuated by more than a hundred, more than a thousand points. How can we reinstate people's confidence in the stock market. Today, um, the entire world is um, facing um, very various um, instabilities, including conflicts and um, a warlike situation. Hong Kong as an international financial center um, would see no exception. But the key is to maintain financial stability and market oversight. And these elements have not been affected by fluctuations in the Hong Kong stock market. 
we have remained financially stable. The Hong Kong dollar has remained stable through the uh, security and futures ordinance and Hong Kong exchange. Um, our markets have remained stable. Um, I would not go into a detailed analysis. Um, I believe inquiries have been made to the financial secretary's office and I believe the FS might be able to offer a more um, professional judgment. In terms of the support offered by the central government, um, it has been comprehensive. Medical supplies have arrived in Hong Kong from the central authorities and um, through different um, departments and the supplies are gradually ar arriving, but some have yet to arrive since um, logistics on the mainland have been affected. And these include RAT kits. We have ordered um, hundreds of millions of sets and only about 50 million sets arrived. For those who are deemed to be high risk or those from certain sectors, we have to consume 2 million test kits per day. These include residential care homes for the elderly, um, discipline services, offices. We must maintain a stable supply of RET kits to these individuals every day. And um, we would ensure that um, the test the um, test kits um, offered by the central government would end up in the hands of the public. And we have distributed 8 million sets. Um, these have been distributed on the district level by the Home Affairs Department, including those who um, live in areas with um, high switch viral loads and um, th through the Hong Kong um, link connection, um, supplies have been distributed for um, proprietary Chinese medicine. Um, they have all been distributed about 450,000 um, sets have been donated by the mainland government. And um, they have been distributed through the Hong Kong uh, Link Connection, the HA's designated clinic and Chinese medicine clinics. So we did not experience any issues with the last mile. Every night um, we would issue a daily press release on the amounts of supplies distributed, but some people might not realize that um, the government itself has a demand on supplies, including the N95 respirators. So we cannot distribute all our supplies because we must ensure that um, there is a stable supply for staff at RCHEs, discipline service officers, etc. But nonetheless, um, we are um, planning for larger scale distribution of supplies for um, those who are quarantining at home. Um, a home um, kit would be distributed, including an oximeter, thermometer, etc. We are planning to um, distribute anti epidemic kits in the community for those who are yet to test positive. So we must um, mobilize NGOs to help with the distribution um, due to the um, uh, restrictions in Shenzhen. Logistics have been affected in recent days, so we will continue to work hard on this front. Secondly, the medical teams. The first batch of 16 uh, uh, vanguards, and they have been here for a few days. They uh, observed uh, the operation of uh, Asia World Expo. They have uh, come up with a plan, and then uh, 75 uh, members have arrived already, and uh, the few hundreds arriving this afternoon will also uh, come on board. And uh, as regards the collaboration, because um, 
Uh, Professor Chen have met them, so perhaps uh, she can elaborate on this. Thank you, CE. The mainland medical teams are here to help uh, the HA to treat COVID patients. We're now in a dire situation, so we are most grateful to the uh, mainland for their support. The first uh, team of 16 uh, have been here for close to a week, and they have been discussing with uh, the HA on a collaborative model on how to cooperate, and they have visited the AWE community treatment facility to see patients. They also have to understand our medical procedures, our nursing and care mode, and also uh, the clinical conditions. The 75 who have uh, just arrived are discussing with the hospital authority on their future work, and they have divided into two groups to go into the uh, red area of AWE to understand the treatment model and HA's medical procedures at AWE yesterday. There was a briefing on infection control and uh, patient treatment. As said by the chief executive, a few hundreds will arrive today. They'll continue to liaise very closely with the hospital authority to uh, decide on the work arrangement. All right, the last question for today. Uh, the lady in the front. I'm from Now TV. Chief Executive, I was just mentioned that primary students who are not vaccinated may not uh, be able to attend face-to-face -face classes. Does that mean that they are not allowed to attend half-day school or full-day school or cannot attend any face-to-face -face classes at all? And as for social distancing measures, uh, the Chief Executive said just now that uh, we must not uh, be complacent. Does that mean that existing measures will stay until the 20th of April at least? Apart from sealing off of beaches, will there be stricter measures? Now, I'd like to know whether the sealing off of beaches is uh, on the advice of the mainland medical team. We were told that the mainland medical teams have arrived. Can you tell us how uh, the frontline operation would be? Because local healthcare personnel are saying that should there be any medical incident, what is the mechanism for complaints and handling? And how can the community and patients be confident with the overall collaboration? And as for supplies from the mainland, uh, there is a shortage of coffins. Can you comment on this as well? Professor Chen will comment on how the mainland medical staff can assist in treating patients here. I hope the media can agree that we should be first and foremost grateful to mainland medical staff who have um, set aside their work in the mainland because they all serve in medical institutions in the mainland they're for their own patients and they have to leave their families and come to Hong Kong to assist Hong Kong to treat our patients. I hope we can uh, view the uh, deployment of their duties in Hong Kong on this premises. Now, as for uh, schools, I already talked about a two, three month plan in February. I said that uh, schools would not want to have online classes indefinitely. 
uh, they uh, have already uh, adjusted their school calendar for 20, 2021. They advanced their summer vacation. The target is for students to return to school for classes on the 20th of April. That is still our objective. And our primary students will return to school campuses first because uh, starting from the 20th of April, secondary school premises will be used for DSE examination. So uh, this is our target. After the Easter holidays, students can return to school for classes and then we can start a DSE examinations on the 22nd of April. I appeal to school children aged 3 to 11 to be vaccinated because after vaccination, there will be more room for schools to arrange lessons and extracurricular activities. Of course, we won't say that uh, no vaccination means that you can't go to school because children have the right to education. But then schools can make arrangements on class lessons and also extracurricular activities based on the rate of vaccination. But of course, all parents want to protect their children. The vaccination rate in this group is just 55%. I think uh, we should make use of this time to boost the rate to um, uh, 90 over 90% among the secondary school children. I think this is a good thing to do. I encourage the parents to uh, take their children for vaccination as soon as possible. We have made special arrangements and vaccination centers for children. I just uh, saw a letter from a primary school principal to the CSB thanking us for the uh, special arrangement on site vaccination. And very quickly, over 400 students uh, were vaccinated. I understand that only two questions were allowed, but since you've asked a third one, I'll try to address that question. Cross border logistics have been affected, and that's why we have created new channels. The funeral service sector through the FEHD under the Food and Health Bureau have been in very close liaison. The department has um, been in touch with the sector to ascertain the difficulties. I think this is just uh, the way the department dealt with the uh, slaughtering sector. We are trying very hard to coordinate and we're discussing with the mainland what measures can be taken. From the uh, Bureau, I heard from the Bureau last night that they are making arrangements for coffins to be delivered uh, by sea. There are three suppliers and at least uh, two batches of coffins will arrive by sea. So we will keep addressing problems as they arise. Since you asked about the arrangement for the deceased, now, within such a short period of time, we have so many deaths and that would affect the logistics uh, of uh, funeral matters. Myself and Sophia Chen have tried very hard to address their concerns, such as the time for issue of death certificates and uh, for bodies directly sent to a public motor motories without a death certificate issued by a doctor. We will uh, try to make arrangement uh, for family members to receive uh, the bodies for funeral arrangement. Usually a coroner's inquest is required, but because of the COVID situation, we'll make arrangements for uh, family members to claim uh, bodies of the deceased to arrange for cremation as soon as possible. And our crematoriums are working uh, day and night and they are already close to their capacity. So 
whenever there are issues, as soon as we learn about them, we'll do our utmost to help people affected and also the community to tackle them. There will be so strong. I stress that Hong Kong um, is facing a severe situation, and we thank the um, mainland for sending a medical support team to Hong Kong. We believe the medical support team can reinforce Hong Kong's capacity to receive and treat these patients given the severity of the pandemic. Well, the mainland medical support team is vastly experienced in treating COVID patients on the mainland and together with their expertise and experience, they can provide timely support and achieve synergy with our team at the hospital authority. The HA has maintained communication with the mainland medical support team They first visited the Asia World Expo Community Treatment Facility and looked at the infection control and treatment procedures. After the support team arrived in Hong Kong, they would first um, support the Asia World Expo Community Treatment Facility. The HA's medical staff would um, work with them in different ways, including um, the treatment on patients um, interfacing with the local medical crew. We are looking to um, reduce the number of emissions uh, number of trans transmissions, number of cases and serious complications. So we would work hand in hand to realize these goals. And in terms of responsibility, DHA has um, engaged the mainland medical support team as honorary employees. So the current insurance provisions on patients um, would apply. The mainland medical support team would work with the HA staff um, based on the established procedures and to attend to patients jointly at the Asia World Expo facility. When the mainland support team um, implements some medical procedures, their role would be identical to HA staff and the HA would assume ultimate ultimate responsibility in this regard. This is the end of the press conference. See you at 11 a.m. tomorrow.